when it comes to food truck diaries brendan's show that he does where he interviews um ufc fighters or no mma fighters you'll say overall mixed martial artists combat art combat is it combat special whatever that was fighters in general boxing or mma whatever he interviews somebody show food truck diaries the idea of the premise you'd imagine comes from an offshoot of like hot ones or something right where you sit down with somebody and you have food and hopefully you use the food as a sort of um lowering of the guard mechanism to make the interview a lot more relaxed and laid back and given that brenda's a former ufc fighter himself you would hope that his kind of knowledge and his experience base would kind of or his knowledge and experience would make the interview a lot more interesting than just a fighter sitting down with a Bre okamoto or something right it's less journalist and more so appear somebody has also been in the in the you know in the octagon like you have gone through whatever he's gone through drama with dana blah 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 kinship is shared so i think on its premise is actually a good idea and the element of the food trucks is also cool because i think in la if i'm not mistaken in la i've only been there once and when i went the food truck thing wasn't as big as it is now but there's whole industry there's a whole entire industry around food trucks in la right they go and they they park up in a certain spot i forgot where it is somewhere i remember seeing on a youtube video where there's loads of trucks in this like car park area that people go and have you know everyone's selling different types of foods and whatnot from all different parts of the world um some people have taken their food trucks and built entire restaurants off the back of them and stuff so it's a real big industry and it's definitely something that people utilize in the community you'd imagine right from the guy on the corner the mexican dude's just selling tacos and shit to the really professional outfits that have a full kitchen with a grill on the in the inside so with that being said you'd imagine there's an abundance of food trucks out there for them to go to abundance there's too many in la probably too many to visit you know given the guests he gets and stuff and the times that he's available to the interviews but that's not the case for every reason some shows that he does there's no food truck most notably the one with Francis and Garner, where he bought some chicken burgers from his place and just put them in his trunk of his new Ferrari that he bought and used it as a prop. But then he didn't, he pulled out cold sandwiches, but then got hot ones and then went and sat in the office. And then with the most recent episode of the Food Truck Diaries, with flipping Alexander Volkanovsky, an absolute, an, an actual champion of the UFC, somebody who defended their belt just the previous, you know, the previous week or whatever it was, has been, you know, is doing this interview last minute on the Sunday and is subjected to eating a something, I don't know what it is, outside of a old, beat up cam old Camino that doesn't work, it doesn't look like for the most part, and there's no food truck, which I don't get. So how can you do this show with no food truck? It doesn't make any sense. The whole point of this show is that you do, you go to food trucks, you interview or talk to the people that sell the food, you have a thing where you're standing in a queue, maybe some fans pop up and stuff. That's how it should be, like a kind of no reservations, Anthony Bourdain type style show, right? Showing you kind of mixing and mingling with the regular folk and taking the UFC fighter, you know, and giving him a meal after his fight, whether he wins or loses, a cheat meal, whatever it may be. But this show is just a madness. And look at this intro. This intro is absolutely insane. Considering this is meant to be a food truck diary show, like he's just in some beat up car. Camino, don't get me wrong, but still, it doesn't make any sense. So let's play the video and we'll continue. Way out from Australia, it's the UFC champion, Alexander Volkanovsky. And I'm feeding him Venezuelan arepas out of the back of an El Camino on this week's Food Truck Diaries. Let's go. Make it big, big. Like. What the fuck is that? What the hell is that? Someone tell me, what the hell is that? The car doesn't move, doesn't look like it works, and the guy isn't cooking him in the back of a Camino. What does he got? Has he got like a hot stove on there or something? Like, what is that? Like, why would you do this to yourself? Like, I don't understand this. I really don't, I don't get it. Why do a food truck if you can't go to a food truck? And also, for whatever reason, it looks like he tries to book them and get them to, pull up to his studio or wherever it is the car park and just be there but i guess if you're a food truck to put petrol or to put fuel to go to a random what do you call it um industrial park somewhere where the offices are just to go and sell or two meals to two people isn't worth your time so if anything this should be a show where you go to food trucks so maybe there's a possibility where him and Volk get into that Camino and they drive to where some food trucks are 
and that's part of what they film like you know then maybe the car breaks down maybe it looks you know it's funny how ratty it looks and you know he's a champion and he's putting him in the shit car that's part of the fun of it like making it a little bit fun instead of just sitting in a banged up car that doesn't work and then you're just awkwardly feeding him food it doesn't make any sense we're going to continue on here and go and i'm going to show you a bit that i thought was funny I think it was this bit where he's like he's standing outside where the guy's meant to, meant to be fed and feeding him. Let's go here. Uh, I think it's here. Yeah. What what kind of food is it? Would you say is it? Mexican? Uh, so it's Venezuelan. Uh, I'm Venezuelan Colombian, uh, but Venezuelans hold it down on arepas. These are arepas. arepas. So, so basically, basically, I take a blue corn masa. Uh, and I just like round it out. Masa is like, that like a bread? Yeah, it's like a tortilla. So the masa is going to be, think of like a thicker corn tortilla. Okay. Uh, and then I split it down the middle, stuff it with cheese, sauce, carnitas, chicken tinga, chicken salad, or just cheese. And it's like a quesadilla. Oh, I mm -hmm. bet that's And then uh, I have uh, something special because I hear we are on a carnivore diet. Oh, right I, I was going to cheat for the, for the yeah. champ on Easter oh, okay. Sunday. I mean, it's we can still cheat, but, but I, whatever you got. I brought a ribeye. We're gonna oh, throw hell a yeah. We're oh, gonna throw yeah. a rib out on the oh, grill. Oh, damn, thank you, man. Yeah, cut that up and make a new arepa. That's a special right there. Oh, uh, I love it, man. But yeah, uh, let me show you guys. Yeah, let's do it. Make yeah, they yeah. look good. Yeah, so I mean, in tradition, uh, the chicken salad is probably the most traditional one um, in Venezuela. It's called Reina Pepiada. I'm no production specialist. I'm no cinematographer. I'm no e e EP. DP, whatever the thing is called that you're meant to be the person who sorts out what, you know, what something looks like in terms of a show and stuff. But just this screen grab alone, just what you see on the screen. If you're doing a food truck diaries, isn't this a horrible frame? Isn't that a terrible frame? You're in a, basically a parking lot of a, like I said, like a, like an office area, residential, no, no, what are they called? Like a business park. That's what you're in basically with all these different places and whatnot. So you've basically, you know, effectively you've kind of doxed yourself, given away your location. And then also you're just on the side of a street somewhere or next to a street. Loads of passers by next to different offices, people walking around, trees, all this random shit. Like, what is this? No backdrop, no nothing. No like attention to detail, zero. And again, I honestly do think there's a real good show here. Food truck diaries with former with former with fighters and maybe former fighters and people in and around the mixed martial arts boxing UFC area, UFC area and stuff. That this could be a good thing, especially off the back of a fight. You want to have a cheat meal. You want to relax and stuff. I don't know. Shoot the shit. Cool. But what is this? What is all this nonsense? Like why couldn't why couldn't there be a better backdrop? Couldn't you angle this somewhere else? Couldn't it be pointed over there somewhere? Maybe, I don't know. I just, I just don't get it. I really, really don't get it. Such a bizarre way to do a show. Uh, it's basically a avocado based chicken salad. Um, coriander, lime, uh, avocado and celery. Very simple. Uh, I use mozzarella cheese on all of them just cause it has a better texture. It melts nicely, the saltiness of it. Uh, and then the salsa that I make is a wasacaca which is a Venezuelan avocado-based salsa, but with my own take on it. Uh, pepperoncinis, fresnos, jalapeno, cool. uh, lots of uh, cilantro, avocado, um, lots of, it's, it's more acid forward than heat. And then the carnitas, I do like a nice 16, 18 hours, depending on how big it is. Um, brace it, then I'll recook it with a secret sauce as well. And then once before I played it, I put it on the griddle just to have like a nice crispy outer layer. Um, the chicken tinga, it's gonna- How bored do you think they both are on a scale of one to 10? Having to sit there, especially Brendan, because he wants to talk about himself all day long. How bored do you think he is having to stand there and listen to a man who he probably doesn't think much of as a human being, clearly thought he was Mexican, even though he's not have to sit there and describe his business how bored do you think they are in a scale of one to ten standing there and could this have been, could have could this have been edited a little bit just for like you know hold your attention sake god almighty mate god almighty let's continue it's gonna be like a chipotle style tomato base a little bit of smoky yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but you fancy yourself, yourself a chef too, right? People tell me you well, like to cook. I like to cook. Yeah, I ain't no, I ain't no chef, but I love cooking. Uh, 
the, the the chef is you know pouring his heart out telling you about his you know about his food which is basically him tapping into his culture something dear to his heart you know getting on you know basically getting on a bit of a ramble but still talking from the heart and being a pure human being and he just cuts him off and diverts it straight to Volk <laughs> he's just standing there thinking okay cool I'll just wait man I'll just wait no worries I'll just wait for you guys to finish talking and then I'll get back to talking about my chicken dingas <laughs> I don't get this show, man. Like I said, there's no food truck, man. The whole point of this thing being fun is that you can go and order. The person's like, oh, yeah, can I get that? <clears throat> Sorry. And then the person's in the in the little thing with a little window. And like, oh, yeah, we've only got this, darling. Sorry, we don't have that. We don't have this. And then you see there's a shot of them, you know, on the little fryer thing, making your thing, cutting it all up and whatnot. And then you're sitting down. You're having a chat on the side of a sidewalk somewhere on these little plastic chairs. That was what a food truck show should look like not this the guy's standing next to some gravel like what is that is that gravel what is that like what, what are we doing here what are we doing here like what is this Brendan's hand doing that weird thing there's a picnic table that i'm assuming shrimp had to go by shrimp probably had to go and pick this up and strap it to his back as he's riding his bmx over on the set with brendan blowing up his phone telling him you better get here you little shit right what they call him now? They're calling him Meatball. They're probably on here. Look at this shit. What is this nonsense? What is this? Volk is there, bored out of his mind, thinking to himself, "I just won a flipping belt, mate, on on last minute notice against a flipping absolute beast in the Korean Zombie." And I'm here, stood here, still black eyed and stuff, bloodied, probably bruised everywhere, thinking about, "I should be at home with my kids, mate. What the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here?" <laughs> What an absolute horror, man. What an absolute horror. Okay, I won't, I won't bore you more. Let's just watch a little bit more and then we'll move on. Uh, and yeah, so I've even got my own like a cooking channel. So I even do on my YouTube social media. I was just going to say, my... what's up with the cooking show for my man here? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, yeah, you, you get yeah. down like that? Yeah, man, oh, I love it, mate. I love it. You really? Know, like I said, uh, I'm not... You know, I'm not no, like what, no, no what, chef what, or anything like that, but I mean... But if I flew to Australia and you had me over for dinner, what are we eating? We like, eat what's your barbecue. special? Good steak, steak, and chicken wings and things like that. What do you guys call Give a barbecue? Me the cold, cold what barbecue. do you guys call a barbecue out there, though? Isn't it something uh, different? Barbecue? Uh, or is it just barbecue? Yeah. Guys, I can't. I can't. What are they meandering about? What is this? What are we doing here for real? What the hell is this? There's no script. There's no idea in the conversation. This stuff should have been cut. This should be on a cutting room floor. Cut, 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 cut. What is this conversation? I cook steaks. Of course he does. Like, what is this? Ay, ay, ay. What a waste of opportunity. But anyway, we, we, we move. We move on. We move on. I can't anymore. I can't with this stuff. Some of this content is fucking brutal to get through, man. It really is. I hope you guys appreciate these streams because sometimes this stuff breaks my brain, man. It literally makes my my flipping brain bleed out from my... Yeah, like my, my brain leaks out from my ears. Sorry, brain bleed from my ears. I sound like a shorb there, innit? Shorbism is affecting me. Now I can't talk. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. Um, Don't know. Duh, duh. Meandering. I should be because cool day PPQ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mitch Attitude in Australia, a barbecue is called a barbecue. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, <laughs> oh, big up everybody, man. Honestly, you guys are making me absolutely bust up on there. I'm not going to lie. A barbecue is called a barbecue. Who would have guessed it, eh? Who would have guessed it? A barbecue is a barbecue. Crazy. Um, can I get a truck walk? Of course you can. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, chat. It brings up myself, I seem to crack up and bread. Vulcan just put his head down like F this guy, true, isn't it? Imagine. Oh, what are they? Better off filling Peter Chang's, true. Kyle Wade says, trying to make money off someone you are making pen who's making pennies. Exactly. Bless that flipping chef, man. Uh, well, you're here. To do. What's Kyle saying? I don't know. People are attacking someone called Kyle, it looks like. Don't know why I'm going for Kyle, but everyone be nice. Let's just be cool to each other. Tyson says on this food truck diaries, we are, we're eating cheese from Brian and drinking Tiger whiskey. It's like big boy car park inside my Bronco. <laughs> oh, mate. Honestly, I don't get it, man. 